Well, does traction help? Or the other question is, why should we torture our patient during the MR scan? Well, cartilage in the hip is a difficult topic. It's a thin cartilage, and it's uh, lying quite deep in the body. If we look at the layer thickness that we have in the acetabular and femoral side, it's around 1.2 to uh, 1.8 millimeters at the acetabular. If we correlate that to the, our ability of uh, the imaging, that's MR imaging, that's CT imaging. These are the typical values that we have achieved uh, as a resolution. That means 0 0.7 by 0 0.7 in-plane resolution, and relate that to the thickness of the acetabulum. That means we have roughly two pixels per cartilage layer that we just have for an analysis. So that's really not a lot uh, of a pixel that we can look at. If we uh, look at the maximal resolution that we can achieve uh, in the hip, that's around 0 0.4 by 0 0.4 millimeters. Here we have a uh, MR arthrography image uh, of a hip. This is a three Tesla image, uh, and the resolution is 0 0.4 by 0 0.4 millimeters. So that's a state-of-the-art uh, MR image obtained by a state-of-the-art uh, um, machine. Uh, and I'm sure you can see some cartilage damages uh, up here on the femur, but you're asking yourself what's happening up here. Why don't we have better imaging on our cartilage? Well, I have here an another image that's a wrist, and uh, here you can uh, nicely see all these uh, cartilage layers uh, on the proximal carpal row and here also. Uh, and if you look at the resolution that we achieve in that wrist, that's 0. Uh, 1.3 by 0.13 millimeters. That's a high resolution. So we achieve per uh, cartilage layer, we achieve about six pixels that we can Im uh, image. In. And uh, interestingly, this is quite an old image that uh, was acquired uh, in the year 2000 on a 1.5 Tesla scanner. Why can't we do that on a hip joint? The problem lies with the uh, uh, location of the hip joint. It's deep in the body and the coils that we use. The coil is a very important element for the MR, MR scanner. It, it gets the signal out of the body. And if you, can, uh, if you have a wrist, you can put that in a very uh, tight coil and the elements are very close to the uh, area that you image and we get an excellent signal out of that. The problem is with the hip joint, we need to uh, use these um, body matrix coils. We lay them over uh, the body in this fashion here. And uh, the best signal actually we have very close to the coil. And as we go deeper and deeper in the body, the signal drops. And exactly where we want to have the signal, usually the signal is quite uh, low. What the computer does, it does even out the signal, so we end up with a nice image for us. Uh, however, there's a lot of uh, post-processing of the signal involved. What we do to improve our imaging is often uh, at uh, intra-articular contrast. We do a direct arthrography, and obviously that helps in many cases. Here you have an, an example that's a standard MR without arthrography, and I ask you um, if you see any cartilage damage. You see some inhomogeneity on the, on the femoral side. If you look at the arthrography image, uh, you, you can nicely see this, uh, um, this contrast which enters the cartilage layer here. It was visible here, but it was difficult to see. So contrast obviously <coughs> helps. Uh, we evaluated uh, the value of contrast systematically in this uh, study. And uh, on the left side, this is a standard MR, and the right side, an MR arthrography. And this cartilage defect gets more obvious on the arthrography image. Also on this image, you can see standard MR versus arthrography image. On your right, you can see the label tear, and also the cartilage lesion is better visible. The differences were there. However, the differences were not great. We saw an improvement by arthrography, but more and more the standard techniques get closer to the arthrography technique. Now, uh, what can we do to further improve uh, the, uh, the problem of cartilage image uh, in the hip joint? One of the major problems that we have are these delaminations of the acetabular cartilage, because often the cartilage is really pushed against, uh, against the uh, subchondral bone, and we don't see the, uh, um, the delamination, and that's a problem for us. So some people came up with the uh, model of traction uh, imaging, because uh, if we inject the contrast, very often we don't have the contrast 
in the area where we want to have it, in between the cartilage layers. Uh, if we open the joint, uh, the contrast is right in the area where we want to see it, uh, and it delineates nicely the uh, surface of the, uh, of the cartilage. Uh, this was first described by Eva Lopez uh, from uh, uh, Spain in two 2008. She used uh, about 8 to 10 kilograms to distract the joint, uh, and uh, she was uh, quite successful with that. We adopted that technique and used it for several hundred MR geographies, but we were not that happy with uh, the success of the destruction. Only about 10% of our hips really had an opening of the uh, uh, hip joint, and the destruction was really just small, um, usually below one millimeter. So we thought uh, maybe that could be a model for an unstable joint because these 10% with a low uh, traction weight uh, which were opening could be analyzed uh, and correlated uh, to a group which did not open. And we analyzed uh, a large number of parameters uh, and these are the significant parameters uh, that uh, uh, were um, seen on this study. We had a higher neck shaft angle, we had smaller CE angles, we had a smaller acetabular depth, higher alpha angles, and a thicker ligamentum teres. Many of these aspects are aspects of, uh, of acetabular dysplasia, which were linked to, to this opening of the, uh, uh, of the joint space uh, with this low weight. Later on, uh, the uh, Florian Schmaranzer and his uh, father uh, made this uh, um, technique more perfect. Uh, they, they changed uh, uh, several uh, aspects. Uh, the, uh, they in increased the injected volume uh, to uh, about 25 milliliters. Normally, that's uh, 8 to 50 milliliters. They uh, uh, added a higher uh, traction weight adapted to the weight of the patient, around 18 to uh, 23 kilograms. Uh, and also, they used... Uh, a dedicated uh, traction device, and with this, uh, usually you're very successful in distracting these uh, joints. Uh, and we also use uh, this technique. Uh, uh, this is the traction device they used in Austria. These are other devices uh, that can be used, so there are several possibilities. But the uh, key is really to use a higher volume and a higher uh, weight uh, to distract uh, the patient. In uh, Florian uh, Schmaranzer's results, uh, uh, you can see that he was very successful um, to, uh, to look at the uh, cartilage, uh, very good uh, numbers, uh, acetabular cartilage and femoral cartilage. Uh, uh, with the labrum, the differences, I think, uh, are not uh, major because uh, the diagnostic performance of MRTography for the labrum was quite, <clears throat> I'm sorry, quite good uh, before. Here, a nice example of a cartilage delamination seen here on this attraction uh, MR orthography. This is an example of a labral lesion with traction uh, orthography. You can see this complex tear, intrasubstance tear of the labrum. Here, chondrolabial separation and uh, delamination of the adjacent uh, acetabular cartilage. The downside is a little bit that you distract the joint. That means you have distortion of the soft tissue, especially uh, the, uh, the ligamentum teres, and also the, uh, the hip joint coxal distracts. Uh, it is, for example, difficult to see in a post-op situation an adhesion uh, of a uh, capsule to the anterior neck because uh, with traction, the anterior neck lies quite tight on the, um, on the bone, and this analysis gets more difficult. Some uh, clinical examples. Uh, this is a patient with a CAM deformity, and you can nicely see here the uh, delamination of the cartilage uh, at this typical site. This is a patient who had a small insufficiency fracture on the uh, femoral side with all that bone marrow edema, and you question yourself, is there a, bone, is there an, a cartilage lesion? And indeed, if you correlate that, uh, you can see here uh, a lesion of the cartilage. This is blown up. You can see here this uh, bubble lesion where the uh, cartilage le really sticks a little bit out into the joint uh, space. Uh, you could see that before also on the standard MR, uh, the cartilage was dark on this side, and that's a sign if uh, the cartilage gets dark on a proton density image or a T1-weighted image. Uh, this may, might be a sign of a delamination of the cartilage. Here is another case, a patient with an AVN. Uh, question is, on the standard MR, is there cartilage damage? Maybe with traction, it gets evident that there's a large area of delamination in this uh, um, segment of the femoral head. 
Here a patient, uh, a female patient with a uh, hip pain. Uh, the question is, uh, is the uh, cartilage abnormal? The uh, radiograph looks quite uh, uh, um, unremarkable. However, on the traction MR, a large defect on the femoral head is seen here also on the proton density image and here on the axial uh, oblique image, nicely demonstrating that full thickness defect of the acetabular cartilage. Here a case with an avascular necrosis. Uh, again, uh, question is the cartilage intact, and you can see this very large delamination with sub subchondral bone in the area of the AVN. Here in the two other uh, planes, sagittal and axial plane. Here another case, uh, this is a post peritus uh, case with, uh, with an extensive deformity of the femoral head. Uh, traction retrography really uh, nicely depicts uh, the cartilage. You can see the same cartilage here, thicker cartilage on the medial side. So a very good analysis on the cartilage uh, using this technique. Uh, in conclusion, the cartilage is really a, a challenging area in the hip joint for MR imaging, MR tragography adjusted with the, an, an increased injection volume, traction weight, uh, and the traction device uh, might be helpful, especially for analy analyzing the cartilage, maybe not so much for the labrum, and we have some di distortion of the soft tissues. Thank you very much for your attention.